welcome once again to Leader Talk, uh, CNN IBN special where we bring together captains of industry and sporting legends to share their leadership mantras of success. We are here in London with two global leaders in a sense. Joining me now is Sri Lanka's most successful cricket captain, Maila Jaiwardene. And also joining me, Prashant Jawar, chairman of the Usha Martin Group, which is now a global group, and he himself is based here in London. Appreciate both of you joining us. Uh, let me start with you, uh, uh, Maila, because I want to start with the idea of natural leadership or born leaders versus people who become leaders over time. It's often said about you that you're a natural leader. Whenever I hear Mahila Jaiwardine's name, people say he's a natural leader. Do you see yourself as someone who was made to captain his country almost from the time you started the game? I never, never, never thought myself as a born leader. I think it just the, the passion that I had for the game uh, kept me asking questions, kept me, uh, you know, wanting to know why would you do that? Why would you not do this? Uh, that kind of thing. Because I just was very much into learning about the game. So I think at, even when I joined the team, I was asking lots of questions from guys like Arjuna and Arvind and all those guys. So they, they were overwhelmed why I was asking all these questions. It was just for me to learn the game. So I think that's where they got the perception that I was a fast learner. You know, the reason I'm asking you this is because uh, you seem to almost enjoy captaining on a cricket field. It seems that you get extra passion and vigor when you're captaining a team. Your performance even as a batsman has been better when you've been captain than when you've not been captain. I mean, that's rare for many cricketers who actually seem to relish the idea of leading a team. Yeah, I think I, I probably have a different opinion on that. I, I felt that, you know, it was my peak when I was like maturing into a better batsman that I got the captaincy. So naturally, my batting and captaincy went together. But I always felt that like my my theory on that was that I wanted to be the player that I was in the team rather than the leader. So I uh, predominantly uh, concentrated on me being the batsman and contributing rather than me being the captain. The captaincy thing, I thought it was just me when I had to make few decisions here and there and on and off the field. But on the field, uh, it's a natural thing. I feel that rather than planning too much, you, you, you actually react to situations and, and whatever your gut feeling is, you just go with that. Um, you know, Ms. Jawar, the reason, one of the reasons why I started with this whole idea of natural versus man-made captains is because in your case, for example, you're a second generation entrepreneur. It's your father who set up the business. So in a sense, whether you liked it or not, you had to captain your, your company's team. Was that again something that you feel you learn on the job, the idea of leadership, particularly when you're in a family business? Or is it something that you believe some people are naturally inclined to lead a team? Rajdeep, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me. Uh, you know, in today's times, uh, it's virtually impossible to just thrust someone onto the top. Even in a family business, you believe that era is over? That's completely gone. Because you have large businesses with, you know, several thousand employees and several hundred stakeholders across, uh, you know, banks, institutions, customers, uh, suppliers. So there has to be a huge amount of learning on the job. And uh, leaders eventually get thrown up in the system. And I see an era of... Uh, increasingly non-family managers even leading family businesses. You know, it's interesting you say that because cricket, uh, I, un uh, unlike business, you know, uh, my father played for India, but that, that didn't ensure that I played for the country because in, in a sense, cricket is as different to being a family-run business as anything else in the world because it's purely merit-driven. To that extent, leadership in a, in a cricket team, he's got thousands of employees, you have 11 people who look up to you. Does that make it easier or more difficult? The fact that there's this constant pressure on you as captain of Sri Lanka, not just to deliver yourself, but to also mentor uh, the 10 others. I'm, I must correct you, it's not just 11 players, but it's about 20 million people as well. So there is much more responsibility than uh, leading your country. So I think there is added responsibility. There is pressure, definitely. The skills, uh, skill level has to be there. Um, I've always tell the boys that, you know, it, it, just because you're the captain doesn't mean that you're part of the team, that you have to contribute as a player. So as long as the player understands that, you know, your 
primary objective is to perform out there. Your skills are needed, uh, whether you're a batsman or a bowler, to make sure that you, you perform um, for the team cause. And then the leadership comes secondary. It's, it's just something that uh, you try and focus uh, on, a, on a different level and try and contribute in a different way. But how do you motivate? How do you motivate uh, uh, the, the team? What, do you have a secret uh, a motivational mantra? Because one of your great uh, triumphs, I keep uh, hearing about this, is that when, when there are close matches, you actually captain better. You actually seem to enjoy the pressure of a close, tight match. How do you motivate your team in those situations? I think um, it's, I, I don't know, I, I guess it's same in business world as well. You need to identify uh, co-leaders in the team as well. You need to identify guys who can take responsibility and then give them that little bit of extra responsibility and get the best out of them. I think you need to handle that. You know, management skills is very important when you're captaining a team because every player is quite different to each other. You still have certain set of rules that applies across the board for everybody, but uh, managing players' emotions and cultures and backgrounds is, is quite important. So that helps you in those close matches as well because you know the guys who will get the job done for you and who are the guys who will you know go through a wall for you. So, so you try and get through that. You made that point as well, that you, know, you believe that the age has come where you've got to empower in a sense. Uh, 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 managers, you've got to find, you believe that the future will be of, of those who find those man managers in your company as well, presumably, because you're now global. Uh, we've been fortunate that uh, almost 15 years ago, we went and learned uh, uh, TPM from the Japanese and the empowerment really starts at the shop floor level. What is the... Uh, uh, this is total plant management. Total plant management. Yeah, it's TPM. Sort of very similar right. to the Toyota uh, it's right. part of the Toyota Lean Manufacturing. Right. Uh, so the empowerment really starts at the shop floor level. Before we started this, if you went and asked one of the staff on the shop floor, whom does this company belong to? Whom does this factory belong to? They would say it belongs to Mr. Shawar. Today, if you ask them, they say it belongs to us. And that's the change in mindset. That's because that is ownership. Right, so you're creating that ownership and interestingly in your case, uh, your father sets up an, an old economy business in a sense, wire ropes, providing it to uh, uh, auto manufacturers and you, you take it to another level because you make it global, you go into telecom, you even go into the media, which is an area where many businessmen in our part of the world want to stay away from. So was that, how important is that to constantly innovate, to constantly be able to stretch the boundaries, to take a business from Ranchi, Jharkhand, one of the more backward areas of this country, and then make it global. Was that the big challenge for you? Because very few groups out of Ranchi, Jharkhand would have become global in the manner that Usha Martin has. Rajdeep, we have been fortunate because some of the fundamental decisions which the founders took really allowed stability in the workforce. Whereas uh, Jharkhand and erstwhile Bihar was not known to be a stable environment from a workforce perspective. Uh, you know, we found Tata's had a tremendous achievement uh, in Jamshedpur from both their major businesses there. By investing uh, in connecting with uh, the wider society, it allowed us a great amount of stability, which then allowed us to create the human capital and the financial capital to spread our wings. Myla, you know, Sri Lanka cricket has been largely, f for the longest time, dominated by one or two centres, one or two clubs. You came from one of those uh, privileged clubs. It's only now that you've had the Sanat Jai Suryas, the Murli Tarans coming from outside the traditional elite. Do you believe in that sense, because you're a smaller society, unlike uh, and, and, and India in that sense, that it's been easier to build cohesion as a leader because you'll all come from a similar kind of, uh, of area? No, definitely. I think that helps a lot because um, I, I agree with you. I think if you go back 20 years or 30 years, I think in Sri Lanka, there was a, a limited society probably played the game and very few had the access for facilities. But uh, our school structure is such a, a dominant force in, in building uh, players and a lot of the like Sanat and Murali, uh, Tulasit, all these guys have come from outstation. So outstation structures has to be improved. So Sri Lankan cricket realized that that's where we needed to go. So we went, uh, got the facilities improved and 80% of our national team right now are from outstation. But end of the day, they all come together 
and, and live in one place. So I think that helps to build a team, that helps to understand, um, you know, about the backgrounds of each individual players and to have a great relationship. But how do you do that in the business? How do you, how do you build that concept of a team when you are as chairman in London, uh, your, your soul, as you said, is in, in, in Jharkhand, you have other enterprises in other parts of the world in your steel, mining businesses, how do you then build a team ethic? How do you create a work culture where everyone across the world will think similarly? Is that, is that a big challenge for you? Essentially, you have to have very close communication. And it's a two-way communication. It's not broadcasting. Uh, you have to listen. Uh, you have to understand the issues. And that creates the empowerment. Uh, that allows uh, much closer team bonding to take place. It can't just be done over emails. No, I mean, no, you I, have to I, physically be I there. Mean, there. There has to be real. I mean, so you, you, as you were telling me earlier, you spent ten days of the of the month in India. So that's con as a leader, you need to be seen by your. You have by to your, be visible uh, by uh, by your employees. You can't have a leadership situation by remote control. You can't have a remote control. Uh, it won't work in the long run. You have to be there. You have to be visible. At the same time, you have to be careful not to tread on the toes of the staff who are actually running the show on a day-to-day -day basis. Let me then take a break on that point and we'll talk much more about uh, how a captain can truly inspire uh, his members because really captaincy in any field, whether in sport or in business, is often about inspiration. Much more in Leader Talk after a short break. Welcome back once again to Leader Talk, where we are sharing leadership mantras with captains of industry and legends of sport. Mahila, in, in life or in captaincy or in a cricket team, particularly you go through highs and lows. You were in the IPL uh, not too long ago and there were the Delhi Daredevils finishing at the bottom uh, of the table. You went through a tough time. How do you in tough times inspire a team? That's, you know, that's one of the challenges, obviously, that there are ups and downs, there's failure and there's triumph. What do you do in a situation like what you had to go through in the IPL, for example? Obviously, we didn't have a good start and uh, we didn't play to our potential and then, you know, we ended up at the bottom. But you need to find where it went wrong and be very transparent about it. I think, you know, we all took onuses of our performances. I think that's the most important thing. I can't take anything away from the Delhi team because even though we didn't win matches, we were so close in so many games and we gave a really, really good fight. So in that scenario as a captain, that's all you could ask from your players. And you know the performances are not there. We, we haven't done to our potential. But you know, you're very transparent. Everyone knows what's going on and everyone understands and takes ownership and responsibility for that. I think that's how you inspire. A lot of family businesses in the last 20 years have disintegrated because of wars within the family. Uh, you apparently have al almost an unwritten or a written constitution in, among your generation as to how the, how the business will be run. Is that to ensure or guard against this kind of disintegration that we are seeing with family run businesses? If there is disharmony at the level of the principal shareholders, it's bound to filter through in the business. So by putting a constitution together, it provides a huge stability to the organization that the principal shareholders are talking in one voice. How do you ensure harmony on the cricket field? You know, let's be honest, everyone cannot be everyone's best friend and there will be some friction somewhere or the other. Sri Lankan cricket has gone through in the past through volatile times. You've had battles with your board. How do you ensure harmony in the team? Like I said before, every individual is different. Their needs, what they require, how they uh, show themselves is quite different. And you need to understand all that and have a set of rules which, which binds everyone together. And apart from that, just let the individuals be the individuals because end of the day, they're going to win matches for you. And, and more matches you win, you win more tournaments. So you might not have a great rosy uh, you know, 
uh, everything going your way there will be few frictions there will be guys getting highlighted some guys won't get highlighted but it's 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 a leadership role that brings everyone together make sure that everyone else gets recognized for the job that they're doing and that their contribution is valued as well among the team you know one of the great things about sri lankan cricket in this last decade and a half has been you and sangakara you know you all are two giants of the game uh, and you seem to be best friends on and off the field uh, is that true or is, is that a, i keep reading about how you all go out for dinner your families are close to each other has there ever been ego clashes between the two of you because many you know that's one of the challenges i guess when you have two great players who played so much of cricket together to ensure that you you know build a team rather than have individual ego clashes not really i think we both have enjoyed each other's success tremendously i think that's the most important thing it has helped us to grow into better uh, better people over the years and we've gone into business together as well um, as well because we trust each other we were very f- uh, upfront with our thoughts and we have good discussions and i think that has helped us to be be better persons as well sure you've had a terrific partnership which has once uh, made more than 600 runs in a in a test innings but you know you, uh, you on the other hand uh, uh, mr jawar have had an interesting partnership in a sense which is your media partnership i mean you set up a newspaper you took over a newspaper prabhat khabar in jharkhand which was ailing at the time and you turned it around and made it a uh, the top newspaper of the region and did it by making it a credible newspaper your editor mr harivansh is one of the most credible journalists in the country now you know normally one believes that when businessmen take over media they do it only to promote their own company but you've actually done it differently what is the secret mantra there our fundamental motive is that the newspaper is an opinion maker and we've had to be very careful even though we have ownership in the newspaper but we've never really been involved in the management of the newspaper we were very careful that this was a brand new sector for us to run industries you have to be close to the government whichever is the government in power to run a successful business at times you have to take a contrary stand particularly a media business that's a right. media business exactly so it was quite a delicate uh, balancing act now you you've done that balancing act very very well mr jawar i i'm going to give both of you the final word if there was one word you would like to describe successful leadership as what is that one basic quality that both of you think is critical out of all the various qualities that differentiate a successful from a not so successful leader you first mr jawar is there one thing creating trust creating trust yeah. what's that one thing that you think is critical uh, maila to become a successful uh, captain i think you need to be very honest about yourself and have respect for the others as well Well, those are leadership mantras which have served both of you well in your respective uh, fields of endeavor mr jawar maila jaiwardene thank you very much uh, for joining us here on leader talk that was another episode of leader talk we'll be back again with many more episodes where we bring captains of industry and sporting legends to discuss their mantras for success thanks for watching